Hi everyone, in this video from Count Backwards from 10, we're going to take a quick look at the physiologic changes in pregnancy as they pertain to anesthesia. This is a super important topic in my opinion as every pregnant patient poses the potential to be a very physiologically complicated individual, which in turn could lead to some disastrous outcomes if we don't understand what's going on with them and why. My goal for this video, aside from explaining what happens physiologically, is that you don't have to memorize anything, but that it simply makes sense. We complete a printable cheat sheet here on YouTube that you could hopefully, you know, uh, snip out and print and use to study. So let's get started. I've kind of outlined the major systems here, and cardiovascular and pulmonary are really going to be the big two. So we're going to start with cardiovascular. Firstly, pregnant women have an increase in their RBC count, increase RBC, by almost 20%. Uh, so why? Well, it makes sense that they would need increased oxygen carrying capacity to supply the growing fetus as well as themselves. Therefore, more hemoglobin, more RBCs, more oxygen transport to their tissues and to the baby. So this does make sense. Now, paradoxically, they develop a physiologic anemia of pregnancy physiologic anemia. And this is because on, on top of increasing their red blood cell count, they also increase everything else. This includes their plasma volume, for example, and that can go up by as much as 50%. That subsequently leads to a dilutional anemia secondary to basically drowning the red blood cells in extra plasma volume. Next, they increase their clotting factor production so they increase to 7, 8, 9, 10, and 12. This leads to pregnancy causing hypercoagulability. From an evolutionary standpoint, this can make sense for a number of reasons, as bleeding for any particular reason could pose a risk to the mother, but also to the fetus, and that upon delivery of the baby, risk of hemorrhaging for any reason could also pose a threat again to the mother. These kind of things in concert with one another make it evolutionarily beneficial to clot more than to bleed. Next, there is an increase in our heart rate, stroke volume, and subsequently, cardiac output. Remember the cardiac output is equal to heart rate times stroke volume and if we increase one or both our heart cardiac output will increase. And again same idea as increasing our red blood cell count. The body does this in order to ensure adequate perfusion and oxygenation to the developing fetus as well as to the mother. And this may be as high as 40 to 50 percent increase. Now there is also a decrease in our SVR, or our systemic vascular resistance, and this is likely secondary to various circulating hormones. The dilatation of the vessels allows increased capacitance to accommodate the increase in pla blood plasma. Finally, the last part for cardiovascular, at least for this, is the aortocaval compression. And this may occur, and this is where the IVC is compressed by the gravid uterus. But that in and of itself will be discussed in its own pathophysiology video. So this is really the big take-home points for the cardiovascular system. So let's move on to the pulmonary system. So the first thing here is that there is an engorgement of the mucociliary vessels of the airway. So engorgement of the airway, both upper and lower, uh, can prove hazardous when attempting to intubate because of the extra tissue and everything being really kind of swollen almost. Uh, this goes the same for the oropharyngeal airway and all that kind of tissue in the back. And what it ends up leading to is a uh, change in the Malampati score of an entire point, meaning that a woman that's a grade two will go to a grade three or a one to two, etc. 
Now, obviously, that's not for everybody, but a general rule of thumb is you got to change a mom and potty score of one. Next, the patients increase their minute ventilation up to can be 50%. Now, this happens for two reasons. One, when we increase our minute ventilation, we get more oxygen into our body and thus help get more oxygen to the fetus. But the other major part is that the fetus, the developing fetus is hypermetabolic, which causes women to become acidotic because of the increased CO2 production, therefore increasing their respiratory rate and or their tidal volume, their, their minute ventilation as a whole, will lead to blowing off of that CO2. Now we should note uh, and I apologize for misspeaking a moment ago, that they really do this by increasing their tidal volume because there's a decreased functional residual capacity in pregnant women. And remember that the functional residual capacity is the residual volume and the expiratory reserve volume uh, combined. And they have a diminished FRC because the gravid uterus displaces the diaphragm cephalad, thus decreasing the overall lung volume. Now, this changes the normal PCO2 to about 32 from a normal 40 in normal adults. Now note that even though the FRC goes down, the total lung capacity actually doesn't change. And this is a result of the chest wall increasing in size, becoming more cephalad and expanding, which leads to a increasing the total volume of the lungs. And the last thing for the minute ventilation is that at first it increases such that when your minute ventilation increases, the PaO2 also increases, but over time it does end up normalizing. And these are the major take-home points for the pulmonary system in pregnancy. The last three will be quick, although important. Gastrointestinally, pregnant patients are at increased risk for aspiration, increased risk aspiration because they're treated as full stomachs. And this is for two reasons. Uh, the delayed gastric emptying as a result of the pylorus being displaced cephalad and because progesterone diminishes gut motility. As a result, like I said, these patients are treated as full stomachs. Decreased gut motility and cephalad pylorus. From a neurologic standpoint, pregnant women actually have a decreased MAC requirement by about 30%. And then finally, from a renal standpoint, they actually have about 50% increase in renal blood flow. And this leads to a decrease in their BUN and creatinine. So these are the major take-home points for your basic physiologic changes in pregnancy. Obviously, this is just the tip of the iceberg, as there are entire textbooks written about OB anesthesia. But from a general standpoint, these are the major players. As always, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. If you're interested in getting involved, let us know. Follow us on Instagram, account backwards from 10. Subscribe below and check out our next video.